When you're trying to determine what enclosed trailer to buy, I believe there are eight key areas of consideration that should factor into your decision-making process. And if you follow them, I think you'll make a well-informed decision. I think it will save you money and hopefully benefit you for a long time. Hi guys, this is Brooklyn Restomod Academy. This channel is devoted to my passion of Restomod ownership, and our goal is to help simplify the ownership and improve your experience in owning a Restomod. We accomplish that goal through tips and tricks, we provide product reviews, and then in a video just like this one, we answer typical questions that Restomod owners have. So let's get into the video. So there are eight considerations for you to think about when you want to go buy an enclosed trailer. The first one is probably the most obvious one is what is the length of your car and how long of a trailer do you need? Now that's based on a couple of different things. Number one, how much gear do you have? So when you go somewhere, what kind of shows do you go to? What kind of places do you travel to? And when you're there, how long do you stay there? Do you have a first aid kit? Do you have a toolbox? Do you have gear? Um, all, you know, all those different considerations. Also think about how you're gonna store it. So when you own it, like a lot of HOAs don't allow trailers in their driveways and things like that. So think about how you're gonna store it as well. The maximum length is consideration, not probably if you're hiring, if you're hauling one, but each state has different rules and laws around those trailer lengths. And so knowing those are important, I included a link in the video in the notes section for you to look and research your state laws for length of the trailer. And then the last item around the specific trailer would be your carrying capacity. A little quick story about carrying, carrying capacity. When my children were younger, we bought a camper with a bunkhouse and we were pushing the limit of what you could tow. You know, they, I think it, I think our truck had a 6,500 pound capacity and the trailer was 6,500 pounds. The, uh, but what you didn't think about is you get to put water, you know, in the, in the camper, it has water for, for drinking and showering and it has, you know, water for, for the restroom and things like that. You've got all your gear, your clothes, your suitcases, bikes, you know, which we have, there's five of us in our family, we had five bikes. So, you know, your, your carrying capacity is a big deal and make sure you take all of it into consideration. Another couple small things would be, do you want room in the front of your trailer? Do you want room in the back of your trailer? Do you want cabinets in your trailer? You know, all that kind of stuff matters. If you're new to this, it doesn't matter much at all. The next thing to talk about would be your suspension. And generally speaking, the lay of the land on suspension for trailers, leaf springs, leaf springs are ten, they just tend to be older. There's a lot of moving parts with leaf springs. They're not very reliable. They're, I would just avoid them. Another type of suspension would be a torsion suspension. A torsion suspension is not much more than a bar encased in rubber and it's within the axle. It's kind of a fancy term, but it's, it's pretty basic. But it does provide a very smooth, reliable, and safe suspension for your enclosed trailer. The latest and greatest would be the air ride suspension. An air ride suspension, and it uses a valve to adjust the ride. So you can have it stiff, more stiff, more flexible. It is certainly the latest and greatest. It is the most expensive option. You know, it's not really required but some people like it and, and those are the three types of suspension. The third consideration for your enclosed trailer will be brakes. And there's a couple different types of braking systems. There is the uh, hydraulic surge brake system. And in that scenario, you don't have a controller inside of the tow vehicle. And so really what happens is you're relying on the truck to initiate the braking for the trailer. And it's, uh, it's fine. Uh, it's, not that I, it's pretty common. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's not what I would prefer. Um, but that's, you know, so that would be one type. The electric drum braking system is the other system. And basically that has a controller mounted inside of the tow vehicle. And when you step on the brake pedal, that transmits a signal back to the trailer, basically initiate its own braking system. So you have a double braking system. That, that is a, generally considered a better way to brake an enclosed trailer. Nowadays, enclosed trailers have disc brakes and things like that. So the braking uh, systems in general are much improved on enclosed trailers relative to the past. The fourth consideration for your enclosed trailer will be, do you want an aluminum frame or a steel frame? Steel frame is how they originated. They are the heaviest. Sometimes dealers will short circuit the way they coat steel frames. And so if they're not coated properly, they can rust and corrode. And so steel frames get a bad rap for that. Now, if you buy one that's properly coated, 
A steel frame is fine, other than the height. The opposite side of the spectrum would be aluminum. Aluminum frames are, they weigh a lot less than a steel frame. They can crack, but nowadays there's more of a, an airplane grade aluminum that doesn't really crack, and so they've kind of got rid of that problem. But they're very lightweight, very reliable, very strong, and of course they don't corrode. Another advantage of the aluminum frame is that they're more popular and so they're easier to sell, much easier to buy and sell. The fifth area of consideration will be an aluminum aluminum versus a composite enclosure. This is a little bit of a vanity discussion if you can really be flashy with an enclosed trailer, which actually you can. That sounds weird to say. Oh well. So here's the story. An aluminum enclosure will work just fine in your rest of mod. An aluminum trailer is typically purchased, it starts out as nothing more than a shell with some aluminum nicks on the exterior. And there's divots, there might be waves, and it doesn't look very pleasing aesthetically. So it's cheap, it's the most cost effective way to go, but aesthetically it doesn't look overly pleasing to some people. And then it doesn't really do a great job with insulation because it's it's aluminum and there's no, no real insulation. So it stays colder inside of it or it stays hotter inside of it. It doesn't protect your rest of mod, probably like, like it should. So on the opposite side of an aluminum uh, enclosure would be an enclosed trailer with a composite enclosure. Enclosure. Composite enclosure is kind of all the rage, like an air ride suspension would be. Think of a, a fancy motor coach, the kind of motor coaches you see now for, I don't know, half a million dollars or something crazy. Those motor coaches have a composite shell. They're going to look better. It's one piece. The exterior matches the interior, so it's more aesthetically pleasing, and it provides better protection for your rest of mod. All right, the sixth consideration for your enclosed trailer would be the tie-down system. Traditionally, enclosed trailers have used a D-ring. And so the idea of a D-ring is basically you take your trailer, you put a D-ring on each corner, you pull your vehicle in, and then you basically use straps to tie down your car. Usually the straps are very long. That's a little bit dated of a way to do it, but you're basically hopping underneath there and you're just wrapping it all up and, and so be it. There is a newer system called a Versatrack system. And a Versatrack system has, or V-tracks they're called, basically there's, there's tracks that are laid out on the bed or the floor of the trailer and you can actually adjust where you put rings and that'll make it easier to haul different types of vehicles. But the benefit there is that you can move them and it gives you a lot more flexibility. Now, I have a pretty strong opinion on it. If you're gonna buy new, and even if you don't buy new, you can still negotiate this. But a dealer can install a, a, a V-Track system, a custom system speci specific for your vehicle easily. So again, if you're gonna buy one, negotiate this in. If you're gonna buy one from a dealer new, if you buy a used one, take it to your dealer and pay them and do it. it. It's pennies in the dollar, it doesn't cost much at all. But the idea behind a custom Versatrack system is your specific vehicle goes into it, it's measured to fit your vehicle, and you can get these dialed in so well that you don't even need to put straps underneath the car at all. So most rest of mods are gonna have a frame off restoration, and so if that's you, uh, you can just basically put uh, ties down around the tires, wrench them in, and you can transport your car safely without even having to go underneath there and, you know, deal with scratching the axle or something like that. So the custom tie down system is the way to go without a doubt. The seventh consideration for your enclosed trailer are the wheels and tires. The wheels are pretty straightforward. Most wheels are just metal and they're painted. I suppose if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy something that doesn't have metal wheels, I guess I'd be concerned. But other than that, they're they're pretty basic. Tires are the real major consideration for your enclosed trailer. So you can get radial versus uh, what they call a ply or a plies tire. A plies tire is an older technology. The more plies you have, the stronger the tire is. I don't care much about that. Radial tires are the better option. If I bought a trailer that didn't have radial tires, I would put radial tires on it. They're not very expensive, all things considered. Consider what they're towing and the value of it and your other belongings. And it's a pretty easy decision. When you're buying an enclosed trailer, make sure the tires have an ST designation, which means they're for trailer use. If you're gonna buy a trailer, particularly a new trailer, and doesn't have an ST rated tire, I would negotiate that in. If you're gonna buy a used trailer and doesn't have ST rated tires, I would negotiate that into the price of the used trailer. Okay, number eight, the eighth consideration for you would be how to get your vehicle in and out of the trailer, and then also how to get yourself in and out of the trailer. So getting your, if you have a low rest of mod, that's probably the biggest challenge of getting in and out of a trailer. And so if you have a low rest of mod, look for a trailer that has a dovetail, a rear dovetail. It's a gradual slope with a ramp that makes it easier to get your rest of mod in and out without uh, peaking. Thank you for viewing. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's a great way to say you appreciated the effort I put into this video. 
Thanks again for viewing. Enjoy the rest of my day.